Hi, and thanks for joining me for extra flute practice. Today, we're going to be working from the Standard of Excellence book, book one. All right, so this is the uh, first practice play along. So um, if you watched the previous episodes of just Musician's Edition for flute, we have gone over how to put the flute together, how to make a noise, all that. That's the stuff that is very first shown in the book. Um, if this is your first time stopping in, I would recommend checking that that one first, at least to know how to put your flute together and to make a noise. This is just more for practice, and I'll still go over the fingerings with you too. Okay, so the first thing they teach us in this book, or they go over, is B flat. Now, I haven't covered this quite yet in my regular series, but that's okay, I taught a little differently. So, um, and you should know by now what the treble clef is, the time signature, the whole note, the whole rest, the ledger lines, the bar lines, you should know all of that from the previous lessons. Once again, if you haven't covered it, I really recommend going back to it. Or you could just read it on top of the book. Uh, it's a little harder to just read it, but it's up to you. Okay, so to play B flat, we're going to hit the thumb key. Remember, this is the thumb key, not this one. It'll always be this one. And then we have our index finger down. And then on the left hand, we have index and pinky. That's how it should sound. Okay. Are you ready to play exercise number one? Ready? One, two, three, four. And that's the end of the song. How'd you do? I am a big fan of doing things in threes. Lucky number three. So let's do it again. Ready? One, two, three, four. Still doing okay? Feeling a little more comfortable each time we play it? Should be. All right, one more time on this exercise. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great, not too bad, but the purpose of that exercise was just to get you comfortable with the fingering, getting the airflow, and just getting comfortable with seeing the note itself. Okay, so now on to exercise two. It's an A. So to play A, it's once again, it's the thumb key, index, middle, and remember, we skip this key. It does not go here, it goes here. And then on the right hand, it's the pinky key. All right, ready to play this one? Ready? One, two, three, four. How was that? Not so bad, eh? All right, let's do it again. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great, okay. One more time. Ready? One, two, three, four.
great. Okay, ready for the next exercise? We're basically going to be just switching back and forth between B flat and A. And there's a measure of rest in between so you can kind of get your fingerings, you know, in the motion of switching back and forth. All right, we start off on B flat. Ready? One, two, three, four. How was that? Were you able to switch back and forth pretty easily or not so much? There, I don't really have a trick for switching them back. It's uh, one finger for one finger, basically, but you know, it, it's all just a practice thing. Let's try it again. Ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, let's do it one more time for good luck. Ready? One, two, three, four. Very good. Are you able to hold those notes out okay? If you're struggling a little bit, remember, well, actually, we haven't talked about this at all, but we will, I guess, a little later. Um, when breathing, there's, people breathe in two ways. They usually, they can breathe from their lungs, and you can see the lungs going up and your chest going down, and you can breathe from your diaphragm. In breathing from your diaphragm, the tummy goes in and out, in and out. You wanna make sure that you try to breathe from your diaphragm, and then, you don't want to push your air out all hard and fast at the same time. You want to just kind of keep it consistently going, you know, almost as if we're just talking. You know, you should be able to at least talk for those four beats. Um, it's kind of a thing that can be challenging, but I, I believe in you. You can do it. Okay, ready to move on to exercise number four? All right, we're going to learn G. Now, you should know the note G because that's the first note we learned in our regular series. But in case you need the refresher for the fingerings, it's thumb down, one, two, and three, and then pinky. All right? Ready to play? One, two, three, four. Shouldn't be too hard, right? All right, let's do it again. Ready? One, two, three, four. Let's do it one more time. Ready? One, two, three, four. All right, how was that? Still should be getting a little more comfortable each time as we go along. You should be feeling better in your embouchure. Yes, should be feeling good now. Okay, and if you're not, it's not a big deal. Uh, the more we play, the better we get. All right, so on to exercise number five. Now we're gonna go over all three notes we just learned. And once again, you have a measure to kind of remember your fingerings and figuring out switching. Okay, ready? One, two, three, Four. How was that? So, 
between A and G, it's real simple. It's just this ring finger comes up and down. All right, ready to do it again? <clears throat> ready? One, two, three, four. Is that feeling a little better? Let's do it one more time. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great. Now the book is asking if we're playing with good embouchure and hand position. Do you feel like you are? Are your notes coming out nice and solid or are they still kind of airy? If they're still coming up a little airy, try tightening up a little bit or loosening up. It could be either way, depending. Uh, remember, we want to make the air flow into our flutes. And good hand position, it should just be nice and relaxed. Shouldn't be anything like this, or your thumb shouldn't be out like this. Just a nice, relaxed hold. All right, exercise number six. Are you ready? Let's do this. One, two, three, four. How was that? Did that B flat catch you off guard? That's all right. Let's do it again. Ready? One, two, three, four. How was that? A little better? More prepared? Let's do it one more time. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great. How was that? Ready for exercise number seven? All right, we can do this. Ready? One, two, three, four. How was that? We had a little bit of a jump between the B flat and G, unlike the others that kind of just went into order. Did it catch you off guard? Let's play it again. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great. One more time. Ready? One, two, three, four. Great. Is that better? And next, the book is asking, how is your posture? So let's take a moment and talk about the posture because we haven't done the other series. So when I play or practice, I guess, I usually practice standing up because 
it just helps me prepare for, you know, the way my back should be. You shouldn't be slunched or hunched or like leaning back in your chair. You should just be sitting up nice and straight, almost as if you're standing. And that's how it should be, is nice and straight. And when you hold your flute, it, it shouldn't be down like this or too high like this, though I can't imagine anyone actually playing like that, your arms, and you'd get really tired. It should just be, you know, still kind of comfortable and just nice up straight. And when you're sitting, it should be that way too. Never cross your legs when you're sitting. Um, you want to get up on the edge of your seat and sit up nice and straight and tall. Act like you're a queen or king. They always sit up nice and straight and tall. All right. I think that'll do for today. We hit for, for flutes only in the book. So if you're still struggling, feel free to go back, practice some more. There's no harm in that. The more we practice, the better we get. All right, until next time, thank you. Bye-bye.